It's the Harris Football Podcast, brought to you by DraftKings, America's top-rated daily fantasy app, with your host, Christopher Harris. Welcome! Hey, everybody! Welcome in. My name's Chris. My foot did not come off the floor with that introduction. How are you, you children of the possum? Thank you for listening today. Wear a mask. Uh, I will talk about Dolphins Jags here in a second. Uh, off the top, I want to mention that we are continuing to do the $5 Pick'em Contest at BookmakerContest.com, and I'll say this again later in the show, but Bookmaker decided to fully fade me this week it's five bucks to enter this week everyone who beats me in the contest in week three will get a ten dollar credit on their bookmaker account so yeah if you've been on the fence about starting up a bookmaker account it might be a good week to fund one and get in our contest you can get instructions at bookmakercontest.com and basically everybody can root against me Except I'm going 15-0, and 0, so you're all screwed. All right, let's talk about the Gardner Minshew experience. Um, I was not expecting a mini tidal wave of, of outrage and confusion over my ranking of Gardner Minshew at QB 15. And even after I took DJ Chark out of the ranks, once we learned he wasn't going to play, uh, putting uh, Keelan Cole at, at wide receiver 45, people really seem to be upset <laughs> and putting LaVisca Chenault only at wide receiver 33 people did not seem to be happy I, I think that's usually an indicator that there are a lot of other ranks out there saying something different so then people go hey man are you sure and of course the answer is of course I'm not sure I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen it's it's poker baby I get plenty of stuff wrong sometimes you eat the bar and sometimes the bar will eat you Indeed. Uh, this is one I got right, and uh, there was some high-profile fantasy whinging on Twitter. Uh, people complaining, experts complaining, why, oh, why didn't reality conform to my expectations for it? Which is always the funniest kind of tweeting. Yes, I made a bad call, but it's not my fault. It should have been a good call. <laughs> if only these pesky players weren't involved. And listen... There are times when I'll tell you, hey, I'm not that interested in that player. I've watched the film. I don't think he's that good. I think the range of possible outcomes contains too much downside. And then th that guy goes crazy. But I think what I said yesterday on the podcast bears repeating, especially early in the season. I don't generally like having my fate rest in the hands of players I don't think are that good. You watched Gardner Minshew on Thursday night. He can be okay. He can be not so okay. Chris Conley did him no favors with the drops, but Minshew himself reacted poorly to pressure, uh, ran backwards too much, weirdly didn't really do the rookie Baker Mayfield thing of taking perimeter shots until pretty late in that game. They threw it over the middle a lot. Considering how poorly the Dolphins had played in the secondary in week two, it was a weirdly conservative sort of desultory effort. And I don't know, to me, it's, it's better to go down with players I know are good and can succeed in most kinds of surroundings and most kind of matchups. And sometimes that winds up looking bad because sometimes they don't perform, but it'll always be the way I think about these things. Uh, you got to see what James Robinson offers, which is fine. You know, uh, Dr. Fox on Twitter said, hey, Harris, is James Robinson Chris Carson? And I think Carson might be a little faster, but stylistically, yep. You know, probably David Montgomery is on that access as well. It's They're not terrible players. It can work. It worked last night for Robinson. Uh, he played a lot early in that game, played less later in that game as they were, as they were behind. He's a mid to low level RB2 who, I don't know, six catches for 83 yards last night. I, you know. This is the offense that mercilessly fed it to unspecial receiver Leonard Fournette last year. Uh, and, you know, so Chris Thompson doesn't play all that much outside of hurry up and, and falling way behind. Um, you know, I can't, I can't say that six catches can't recur in a, an offense that fed Fournette like that last year. I mean, <laughs> you know, you, we, are, we are a week away from someone telling you, well, listen, it's obvious James Robinson is a great PPR play. He, he just, like, look at the numbers. He's just a really talented receiver. Um, yeah, I will, I will st stipulate that Fournette's 2019 means that a six catch game, it can, can keep happening. What, but what's not going to happen is 83 yards on those six catches. Like that was, if you saw it, it was a lot of bad tackling for the Dolphins. Uh, it would be nice to come out of a game where the tailback got double digit touches in the first two drives looked 
decent doing it, wound up with 27 touches overall, played 45 snaps, while his two subordinates played eight and four snaps apiece. You would love to be able to come out of that game saying, hell yeah, I'm excited about Miles Gaskin. But then here comes Jordan Howard. (laughs) I said this on Twitter last night. I'd love to go back to 2017 and tell everyone that their beloved Jordan Howard, who was supposedly very good at football, just three years hence, would become Mike Tolbert coming in on the one-yard line to torment everybody. Three games, three scores from inside the two. He was one for three last night on goal line carries. He's on pace for 16 touchdowns. I mean, why wouldn't you roster Jordan Howard? Don't roster Jordan Howard. And Gaskin will probably get some better luck. Um, he, he's a pure starting running back in the NFL. He doesn't blow me away with his ability, but he's, you know, he's probably a backup long-term. In bye weeks, he's going to be an okay fill-in, and he's probably had bad touchdown luck. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick didn't have to do a lot. He also stole a short touchdown run. Uh, Six pass attempts that traveled 10 plus yards in the air, which is not usually his game. It's almost always double digits for him. That's how you can tell the Dolphins had a lead, a lead that they do not fear giving away to the Jags. Um, When when, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick isn't flinging it all over the place, Devontae Parker. uh, So, okay, he drew a short interference call in the end zone because everything was pass interference last night uh so like it wound up being okay for parker um but i agree with the broadcast last night it, he doesn't appear to be pushing his hamstring very hard so he's not running at full speed he's been involved he could have scored without that interference you don't totally dismiss five for 69 but also you can't treat him like we treated him at his peak moments last year speaking of the officiating uh, if you're on your back and an official is above you reaching and pulling your body, like grabbing you and stuff, and you don't know who it is, and you're like, dude, stop touching me. Yeah, you're going to get ejected. Great officiating in that league. Um, Mike Kosicki caught up in the conservative as well. Fortunately, he had the red zone touchdown. He also drew a, a pass interference in the end zone. Preston Williams, two catches for seven yards. He had one of those short touchdown passes as well. I'd say generally speaking for the Dolphins passing game, you know, This game it was, but generally speaking, you don't think with Fitzpatrick under center that volume is usually a problem going forward. Uh, Hey, you know, you won a game. You won a game. That is so great for you. Can we please have Tua? Today's kickoff. Okay, on today's show, I think I'm just about done with that Thursday night snooze fest. So instead, I will mention the injury guys that we'll be tracking this weekend and uh, talk about not much. We don't know much. We'll we'll see when they're active or inactive. And then I will get right to my guest. It is a Friday, but Cousin Josh needed the week off because it's his wife's birthday. And also, I think he may have heard that there was a sale on tiny bathing suits somewhere in Hoboken. So he has disappeared and stepping into his place. Hello. <laughs> you know him as the underscore Baron. He's Jim McCormick. And Jim and I are going to count down five players we would consider buying in Fantasy Leagues right now. Uh, Plus, we will also talk about our favorite point spread bets of the weekend. It'll be fun, and I thank you for listening today. We are sponsored by Manscaped today, the world leaders in below-the-belt grooming. It's time to be accountable. What do they say? Time to get rid of the funk and shave your junk. Precision tools for your family jewels. The rhymes practically write themselves. I have the Lawnmower 3.0. It's a waterproof cordless body trimmer that's designed to make sure you never have any nicks or cuts when you shave down there because, ouch. And also, you don't want to use the same razor you use on your face. And right now, Manscaped is offering the perfect package essentials kit. Not only do you get the Lawnmower 3.0, you get tons of grooming products as well. Do you think it doesn't matter if you're a hairy wildebeest down there? Ask your partner. Ask a friend. I think they will say it matters. Less funk down there. I use the Lawnmower. It's great. Skin safe technology because we are taking no chances. Sure, you can have a giggle about all this. It's kind of silly. But Manscaped legitimately works great and you'll have it forever. And I can get you 20% off with free shipping. When you go to manscaped.com and use the code HarrisFootball, 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code HarrisFootball. Injury news. 
I mean, is it news? I guess it's news. I guess that's right. They're leaking news. They're telling us what might or might not happen. Let's just sort of agglomerate all the names we're going to be paying attention to for the weekend. As I said yesterday, there's really no such thing as an injury expert who can watch someone run with a pulled hamstring and say, ah, three weeks. I mean, it's just not a thing. The person who's actually doing the inspection probably tell you really, really well what the what the prognosis is somebody sitting on their couch and going look at that person limp doesn't have any more idea than anybody else uh sorry i know some of you want to believe that they do they don't Uh, jimmy garoppolo is out uh we're gonna gonna get nick mullins starting we knew that already josh jacobs the jacked gerbil not awesome Uh, we saw him in and out of the monday night game Was it cramps? Was it a hip injury? I don't think we know yet. As of my recording this, he hadn't practiced this week. We'll see on Friday. There's potential to have to replace there. I don't think there's a good replacement on that roster. No one I particularly would want to use. In a fantasy game, uh, the Rams, non-Daryl Henderson running back, so you've got Malcolm Brown apparently will play with his uh, injured pinky, Damian Harris, I guess his pinky must have been much more injured. Uh, So Malcolm Brown is in and Cam Akers, well, when the coach starts talking about, yeah, it's not responding the way we wish, you can assume that Cam Akers will be inactive this weekend, but we'll see. Uh, If it comes down to Brown and Henderson, I think I prefer Henderson, but obviously if Brown is so clear of his injury to the point where they're not even really thinking about it and he's practicing in full, you can make the argument. You could convince me that why would things change? We would just go back to the way things were. Uh, last week where Malcolm Brown's going to get some early down work. I get it. James White, unfortunately, just his his family situation is terrible, so we don't know. Uh, might have to get him out of the ranks because he hasn't reported back to the team yet. I think probably he's not going to play this week. Zach Moss is out. It would appear to be maybe a slight boost to Devin Singletary, although I do not love the matchup against the Rams. And also, to my way of thinking, the problem with Singletary has been much less about Zach Moss and more much more about Josh Allen suddenly being a good thrower. Let's see if that continues. Devontae Adams, uh, uh, that's a big one. (laughs) Uh, We're getting conflicting reports about whether his hamstring is going to allow him to play. I think Julio Jones we can put in that same list. Julio Jones has kind of already, as of my recording this, been called a game-time decision. Uh, Devontae Adams, they haven't said much other than that he hasn't practiced, and somebody leaked to somebody on a national level that it's not looking good for Adams to play, and usually when that leak gets leaked... I mean, I guess you could say it's meaning to manipulate the Saints. Uh, that's a Sunday night game, so it might be hard to wait for Adams, but man, we're just going to have to look at what the news looks like. I guess merciful would be just to get him ruled out right away rather than having to wait, but if, if there's looks like there's a chance he's active, boy, I mean, get yourself a Saint reserve or a Packer reserve and roll the dice because he's Devontae Adams. It's tough. It is tough. Kenny Galladay, I think we've been told so far, limited in practice, so... I mean, you can see where I ranked him. It's not where Galladay would typically be ranked, but if you're willing to assume some risk, obviously there's some real reward. We'll see what the practice reports look like going forward. Juju Smith-Schuster has a knee injury, didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday, whereas Deontay Johnson with his toe problems has been able to practice. I don't think this necessarily rules Juju out, but we're going to keep an eye on it. Uh, We're told that John Brown is trending in the right direction to play. He did play last week, made it through that game. Will Fuller, we're told, is is practicing in full. So now we're like, what the heck was going on last week? Because he was clearly in and out of that game and trying to get stretched out all through that game. I don't feel great about using Will Fuller. I'm going to say it. I think that's been a clear message from me kind of all the way through is that uh, certainly right now I prefer Brandon Cooks. Uh At least he seems healthier right now. I don't love either one of them against the Steelers, clearly. Sammy Watkins is in the concussion protocol. He might need to come out of the ranks, and I don't think that's a big tragedy. Christian Kirk isn't in the ranks, but he has a groin injury. He made kind of one big play. It was a really good catch last week, but uh, yeah, I don't think you want to use him. Jamison Crowder, Brashad Perriman have both been ruled out, and Chris Hogan, the, I guess, presumptive number one receiver for the Jets, he's also a question mark. Alshon Jeffrey has practiced, but he's going to be out And then at tight end, you're going to have a question about George Kittle. Fortunately, once again, it's a East East Coast game, so the time zone will be in your favor. If he's active, I don't know how you get away from him, even if Nick Mullins is the quarterback, and he will be. Darren Waller has a knee problem, hadn't practiced as of my recording this. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Uh, That's an early game also. It's in New England. Um, If he's active, I think you probably want to use him. And Dawson Knox for the Bills has been ruled out. Today's guest. He owns the underscore. Up there, another keyboard. 
for the scene He'll get a penny more So don't forget to